What's up, I'm Ujemma and welcome back to my channel. When I first started learning JavaScript, I didn't know the difference between good coding practices and bad coding practices. But as the years have gone on, I've learned to use better coding practices, which make my code just a lot easier to read and understand. So through the process of using better coding practices, there's one part of my coding glow up that I find really interesting. And that is I almost completely stopped using the array method for each. But don't get me wrong, the for each method is a very powerful function that allows you to do a lot of great things. But whenever I start contributing to a project, I realized that I always defaulted to other array methods before going to the for each method. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the four common situations that I find myself in where I prioritize using alternative array methods over the for each method. So by the end of this video, you should start questioning whether you should be using the for each method as much as you do right now in your projects. So the first situation, which is probably the most common that a lot of programmers find themselves in, is that they want to generate a completely new array from iterating through the original. So the process of transforming each element that you see within an array and then appending it to a final array is something that a lot of programmers have to do on the daily. To illustrate this process a little better, let's look at a code block that takes advantage of the for each method. So as you can see in this example, I have an array called people. There are three objects in this array where each object has a name and age key. So below this array, I have a brand new empty array called names. Then right below that, I call the for each method on my people array. So the for each method takes a callback. So inside my callback function, I push the person's object's name property into my names array. So the for each method is gonna step through each object in the people array and then push just their names to my names array. And then I can print out my names array where I can just see the names of each of my people objects. So this isn't terrible code by any means, but I think this code can be more clear and declarative. So in this case, I would default to using the array map method. So whatever I return inside my callback will actually be the element that's appended in my final array. So let's take a look at an example. So we're dealing with the same people array. And then instead of creating a new empty array and assigning it to my names variable, here, I'm calling the map method instead of for each. Map takes in a callback function just like for each, but unlike for each, the callback function within map will return a value that will get inserted in the final array that is returned from map. So you can see here, I'm assigning the return value from people.map to name since map will return person.name at each step of the iteration. This to me is a lot more expressive than using the for each method since whenever you see the term map, you know that you're gonna return out a completely new array. The second situation that I find myself in a lot is that after iterating through an entire array, I want to return one single value from that iteration. This is probably the most common situation where new software engineers will fall back on the for each method. So let's say that you want to construct a completely new object from iterating through each element in an array. So to give you even more detail, let's say that I still have my array people and each person has a name and a position property. I want to create a new object called company where I want the key to be the position title and the value to be the name of the person who holds that position. So the final object that we would want to create is that we would have the position CEO be assigned to the name of the person who holds that position. We can definitely accomplish this with for each, so I'm gonna walk you through how you can do that. So here we have my people array and now we have different people with new names and now they have a position attached to it. And then I create a new company object that's empty. Right below that, I call the for each method on my people array and inside the callback function, I assign the person's position inside my company object to the name of the person that holds that position. So if I print out this new company object, I can see that my CEO is Oprah Winfrey, my CTO is Pharrell Williams, and my CFO is Missy Elliott. But again, I feel like this code can be further simplified and even more clear to the people who are gonna be reading your code. So the array method that I would use and is probably my favorite array method is the reduce method. So instead of using for each, let's look at how the reduce method could work. So the reduce method is arguably a little bit more advanced than other array methods, but I'm still gonna walk you through how you can use it so it's not as intimidating as it might seem at first glance. So the reduce method takes in two arguments. The first is a callback function that will get called at each step of the iteration. This callback takes in two arguments where the first is called the accumulator and the second is called current value. The accumulator accumulates or gathers all the callbacks returned values. So accumulator is the returned value from the callback method for the previous element in the array. Current value is the current element in your iteration that you're looking at. So that's the callback for the reduce method, which was the first argument. And the second optional argument is the initial value. The initial value, if set, will be used as the value for the first argument in the callback. So for the first step of our iteration, accumulator will be equal to initial value. I personally recommend always setting the initial value so you have an actual value to deal with during your first step of your iteration. So going back to our example, instead of using the for each method, I'm gonna use reduce. 
I call the reduce method on people where I have my callback and assign the value of my initial value argument as an empty object. So for my accumulator, I call it final company and my current value is called person. So at each step, I want to assign my current person's name to the key person position. Then I want to return my accumulator, which is final company, so that the next step of the iteration will have the latest version of our object. So for the first step of our iteration, we're dealing with an empty object, but once we return our new updated object with the CEO position with Oprah Winfrey, that new object gets passed to the second iteration, which now has CEO and then it appends CTO and it will do the same thing all the way down the array. Once we've stepped through all elements, we return the final object. So the great thing about the reduce method is that it works for any type of data inside of JavaScript. You can set the initial value to be an object, a string, a number, a big int, even a method. And that value will serve as your accumulator throughout the lifespan of your iteration. This might take a little bit of time to get comfortable with, but I highly recommend starting to use reduce as early as possible. For me, reduce probably takes up somewhere around like 50% of my for each use cases. The third situation that I find myself in a lot is trying to figure out if a certain type of element exists in my array and then exit out early. One of the biggest gripes that I have with the for each method is that it doesn't have the ability to short circuit or exit early when a certain value is found. You can't use the break statement and there's no other way to just like jump out of the loop. So let me illustrate this further with another code block. Here I want to check to see if at least one person is under the age of 18. I create a boolean called is one under age and then inside my for each callback I check to see if my current person's age is less than 18. If so then I switch my boolean value from false to true. To me, this is a lot to take in as a reader and probably a lot to keep track of as the writer. And again, it's not the most readable block of code because you have to decipher what purpose the for each method is solving. So the alternative array method that I would use in this situation is sum. It's a little bit more clear what the purpose of the sum method is. So let's see how we can use sum in this case. So the sum's callback returns a logical predicate or just a logical operation that states that at least one person has to be under the age of 18. If at least one element satisfies the predicate, the method sum will exit out early and return the value true. Otherwise, it will return false. Since at least one person is underaged, the return value will be true. And the last situation that I find myself in a lot, which is actually the opposite to our previous situation, is finding out if each element in the array is specifically the same in one certain way. So in our last situation, we use the method sum, but in this situation, we wanna use the method every. So let's take a quick look at the for each example, and then we're gonna see how we can use every. So in this case, I have a variable named is all under age, which is set to true. And then inside for each's callback method, I check to see if the current person is 18 or older. If that's the case, then I change the variable from true to false. Similar to us using the for each method instead of the sum method, there's a lot to keep track of in this example. Like for example, does it make sense to set the default value of our Boolean variable to true or false? So in this case, it makes sense for our variable is all under age to be set to true by default. We want to assume that everyone in our array of people is under the age of 18. It's not until we come across someone in our array who's 18 or older where we want to change our variable is all under age from true to false. So this is a lot of mental energy that's being spent on something that doesn't need to be handled by the developer. So similar to sum, every solves this problem of having to determine what the default value is. So in this code block, I assign the return value from every to my variable is all under aged. Inside the callback method, I have a predicate that returns whether the current person's age is less than 18. If all the elements in the array pass the check, then we return the value true. Otherwise it will be false. And in our case, the final value is false. So these are probably the four most common situations that I find myself in where I default using other array methods instead of the for each method, but there are tons of other array methods that I used before for each. So who knows, I might make a part two or explore more situations that I find myself in where I prioritize other array methods over for each. But just as a reminder, using for each isn't bad practice. In theory, you can come across situations where using for each would be a great benefit to you. But from my experience, nine times out of 10, I find myself using a different array method before for each so I can make my code more expressive, clear, and declarative for other people when they read my code. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm also on Twitter where I talk about a whole bunch of stuff. You can go follow me, send me a DM, and we can have a chat. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.